Hey everyone, welcome to Why Life Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys. I am so excited to finally share this video. The 400 millimeter showdown. This is the Nikon Z mount lenses. I've got every possible 400 millimeter combination you can think of. And I'm gonna tell you everything about it and give you some recommendations if you're looking in this range right after this. I've been wanting to do this review for a while. And this is gonna be a, a little bit of a review and a little bit of a product comparison. And I'm gonna show you a lot of information. So here's, what, here's how the video is gonna break down. There's gonna be some chapters at the bottom to help you out navigate this. What I did is I took every 400 millimeter lens combination I could think of. And here's what we're gonna look at today. I've got the 402.8, which I own. I'm gonna look at the 404.5, the 100 to 400, and I actually threw in my 70 to 200 with a 2X teleconverter. So that one's also gonna get us to 400 millimeter. I wanna thank B&H, before I go any further, they are uh, loaning me these two, I'm sending them back soon, and boy, I was really, I, just spoiler alert, I was really impressed with these two. We're gonna talk about them, uh, and I think the benefit of this video is there's gonna be a lot of people curious about these two. They're very similar in price point, and, and people may wonder which one should I get, and I hope this video will help you if you are looking at these. You may just be curious, how do these stack up to a, a $13,000 or $14,000 lens? And then what does it look like when you add a 2X teleconverter to a much shorter focal length to get you there? So I'm gonna give you all of that. And I'm gonna give you the criteria for this review first. So a couple things we look, I look at with lenses. And you, you may be a little different in terms of what you value. But I'm gonna rank these and I'll put them up on the side here. Number one for me is sharpness. Okay, so and I think with, with most people, sharpness is generally what they're looking for first in a lens. That's number one. Number two is aperture, maximum aperture, or the amount of light that I can get. So we'll talk about that a little bit, and I'll explain where these fall into the, that gamut. Number three for me is speed of focus. I need a lens that, that focuses fast, especially if I'm doing birds in flight. But really, even when I'm doing small songbirds that are moving quickly, uh, focusing, focus speed is really, really important to me. I also threw in here minimum focusing distance. For me, that is actually very, very important. Talk a little bit about that. Weight, I have this down at the bottom of my list. Weight is not a huge factor for me, especially in this range, because we're no longer talking about 12 and 13 pound lenses like we may have been doing uh, 10 or 20 years ago. So uh, weight for me is a little bit toward the bottom. And then my last criteria for this is just gonna be versatility and intangible. So those are kind of the criteria that I'm gonna do. And at the end of the review, I'm gonna grade these out using an A, B, C, D system. And I'll let you know where all of these lenses fall on that. I've got some real life tests to show you. So, so some sharpness comparisons. And I also took these out in the field and I'll show you some real quick images of some birds from a, my backyard that I took with each of these lenses, and I'll show you some comparisons with that first. So a lot, of, lot to get through. Now before we get into the comparisons, let's just talk about the specs, and you'll see me kind of reference, I've got some notes down here. I'm gonna go through the specs, I'll lay them out on the screen for you at the end, but let's just kind of run through each lens. So let's start with my personal lens, the 402.8. Um, this is six and a half pounds, it's 15 inches long, it's, 8.2 inches or 2.5 meters is the minimum focusing distance with a magnification factor of 0.23. Now, let me just quickly explain what that magnification factor is. It's not normally a huge deal for wildlife photographers, but I wanted to include it because a couple of these lenses, there is a major difference in magnification. Magnification is simply how large does the image in real life, the real size of the image, project onto the sensor. So if the factor, magnification factor was 1.0, your lens would be a one-to-one -one or macro lens. Meaning the size of the image, if it was one inch tall, at minimum focus would display one inch on the back of your sensor. I think I got that right. Somebody can challenge me down in the comments. At 0.2, essentially what you're saying is at minimum focus, something that was five inches would be shown at one inch on the back of your screen. So that's a 0.2 factor. Again, I think I got that right. You can correct me down in the comments if I'm wrong on that. But generally speaking, most long lenses have a magnification of about 0.2. So there's a range in there. It's a very, very common number for, for long lenses. So this is right up with the others, right around 0.2. All right, let's go on to the next one. This is a 404.5. This is 2.7 pounds, nine inches long, Minimum focus distance, 8.2 inches. Very curious on that, 2.5 meters. And the reason I say it's curious is in my mind, 
This was going to give me closer focusing than my lens. It actually has the exact same minimum focus and it's got a magnification of 0.16. So a little bit different in, in that this one does not get you closer than this one. A lot of times smaller lenses, and I'm talking about the physical size of the lens, um, often they will allow you to have a closer focusing distance. But again, this one does not. All right, those are the basic specs for that one. Let's get on to the next one. This is the 100 to 400. This has a um, minimum aperture of 5.6. So this was again, 4.5 aperture, 5.6 aperture at 400 millimeters. Remember, we're talking about everything at 400 millimeters. This is 3.2 pounds, uh, 8.7 inches long, uh, 3.2 feet minimum focus. Let me say that again. Eight foot minimum focus, three foot minimum focus. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time just talking about the size of these real quick. When I opened the box on these, I couldn't believe how small this was. This is a 400 millimeter lens, right? This is a 400 millimeter lens. They are so light. I, and maybe it's because I'm used to using an eight, nine, and 10 pound lens, but these felt so light. I can't imagine anybody would have concerns. Now, again, there are people out there that may have some, some physical um, concerns. And, and if that's the case, maybe these are a little bit heavy for you. But for me, to get a 400 millimeter lens at two to three pounds is really, really mind blowing. So um, the, just the, the small size and the weight on these was a huge, huge plus. If that's a concern, again, we're gonna rank these out at the end. If weight is a big concern for you, something to think about. Both of these, by the way, and I'll put the prices in here, mid $3,000 range, okay? I already told you this one is over $10,000. All right, also in that same price range is this 70 to 200. Now, this one I had to add a 2X teleconverter. So if you're using this setup, you, it only works at 400 millimeters with a 2X converter. Um, this one is also three pounds. Minimum focus is three feet, so very similar to the 100 to 400, and it's about eight inches long. So that's my uh, 70 to 200. And again, I own that one. These two loan from B&H. I got nothing affiliated with Nikon on these, so I can, I can give my review 100% unbiased, and that's what I love about doing it this way. Now let's look at some of these factors. We've, we've gone through the specs. Let's look at what really most people are gonna care about first of all, and that's sharpness. Right off the bat, I can tell you, these lenses are incredibly sharp. I was very, very surprised at how close they were to the, the sharpest 400 uh, that Nikon makes. Arguably the, the sharpest 400 that Nikon makes. Some people will probably tell me that the old, one of the older 400s is sharper, but um, in this lineup, this actually was a hair sharper, but I'm talking just a hair. I was really blown away with how sharp these two lenses are. Let me get into some of these. Um, I gotta switch my view here. So a real simple test, what I did is I, I went in my basement, I set up the lighting, and I put everything on a tripod about 10 feet away. And then I simply took one lens at a time, took several frames, tried to find the sharpest frame, and we're gonna compare them right here against each other for sharpness. Now, I already told you I was really impressed with the two new lenses that I was testing for this. The, the 100 to 400 and the 4.5 were very, very sharp. But let's, let's get in really close and take a look. We're gonna do it kind of at a normal viewing uh, size first, but then we're gonna go to 100% and 200%. And we're, and we're gonna see all the little details on this tennis ball. At 2.8, uh, that's the, the image you're seeing now is the 400 2.8. I'll put some down below. I'll just uh, ref refresh what the, uh, the lens that we're looking at is. So right here's the 4.5. We're gonna do the 100 to 400. And now the 70 to 200 with the teleconverter. And at this distance, you don't see much difference. Again, we're 10 feet away. We're talking about threads on a tennis ball. So we're gonna get some good detail here. And we should be able to see if there's any differences when we zoom in a little bit more. Let's get into 100%. So at 100%, do we see any differences? Here's the 2.8. There's the 4.5. 100 to 400 and 70 to 200 with the 2x. Now, maybe there's a little difference in at this viewing size with the 70 to 200 with the 2x versus the 2.8. So let's take a look real quick. Here's the 2.8 and at this viewing size you might see a little bit of a difference. 
not much, but you will see a little bit of a difference. So I thought just looking at this at 100%, I thought that the 2.8 was probably the, well, it was the sharpest of these lenses. The 70 to 200 was the softest, but, but not soft. I should, it's probably not fair to call it the softest, uh, not as sharp. And then these two I thought perform, performed very well by comparison. Let's get into 200% and see what happens. Now we're looking at threads. I mean, we're literally looking at from 10 feet away. We're and this is what's just incredible about the optics in general. Uh, these longer lenses have the amazing optics and we're 10 feet away and we're looking at little tiny threads. Let's see, let's see if there is much of a difference here. So here's the 2.8 and there's the 4.5. Now you will see a small difference. Keep in mind also that, that if it's just a focusing a little bit different, so rather than look at the middle of this one, look off to the left edge and you'll see that it's actually a little bit closer in sharpness and that could be that one lens was just focused just a split hair off from the other. Um, but both very sharp. You can see the 2.8 here. There's the 4.5. So maybe just a hair sh uh, softer. Here's the 100 to 400. And initially that actually looks a little sharper than the 4.5. In that same ballpark. Probably not quite as sharp as the 2.8. And now let's get into that 70 to 200 with the 2x. And there's that. And it performed pretty well. It doesn't look too bad. Yeah, I'm zoomed in here and uh, 200%. For a 70 to 200 with a 2X, one of the things I will say in general, the Nikon 2X for the mirrorless systems is very good. It is much better than the 2X converter for the old DSLRs or for the F mount lenses, but the Z mount lenses, this performs very, very well. I've used it several times um, on some macro type. I did a video on, on macro-like work for the wildlife photographer, just kind of converting your wildlife lens to macro. And this is one of the setups I use for flowers and butterflies, is my 70 to 200 with this teleconverter. Stay tuned though, because we're gonna talk about one of the other lenses I really, really liked for this. All right, so that's my comparison. Let me just run through it again. Let's see what you think. Here's the 2.8, 4.5, 100 to 400. And I'm gonna now take the full screen and I'm going to show you a side-by-side -side comparison of all of them at the same time. And there you go. I, now, I, I, I rotate these and flip them so that the corners come together. So you can kind of look in that center section and get an idea. But to be fair to each one, and they're all labeled up there, but to be fair to each one, just go ahead and look around and see what you see on this. See how much of a difference there is. Again, we're, we're really, really dialed in here. So we're at uh, over 100% magnification here. So it's, you're getting a lot of detail. All right. After I did the tennis ball test, I took them out in the yard. Now I've used these on several different days, but I found one day where the conditions were very, very even. It was overcast, the light was very consistent. So these, listen, these images, please don't judge me on the quality of these images. These are just what I could find available in my backyard. Birds were not abundant in my yard over the last few weeks, but I, I, I've always got some white-throated sparrows and, and some feeder birds that'll come in. So that's what I did. I just set up near my feeder and I took a few images. Now, let's look at this first one and then we'll go back. I'm going to do one loop through and then we're going to go back at 100%. So this first one, this is the 100 to 400. Okay, this one is the 4.5. No edits to these at all. So these are basically just raw files out of camera, converted to JPEG, no editing. And then this little chickadee was the uh, 70 to 200 2X, all right? Now let's get in at, go back here, go in at 100%. All right. And you will start, and what we're really looking for with songbirds at this magnification is we're, we're just trying to see feather detail, about 12 feet away, by the way. On these birds. So this white-throated sparrow, you can see some, some pretty decent feather detail. Let's go to the 4.5. And on this one, I actually think there was better feather detail. Now again, on the tennis ball test, I said maybe the 100 to 400 looked a hair sharper. The real world test, the 4.5 looked a little sharper. Honestly, I don't think there's a difference. I'm sure that there's a, there's a chart out there, there's a lot of information, there's a lot of specs, but for those of you who watch my videos, my, my videos are always practical. I'll give you some of the data, I'll show you some of the charts time to time, but what I really wanna see is what's it, what's it look like? And I think 
from a sharpness standpoint, I think it would be imperceptible between these two. I don't think anybody, if you, if you went back and forth and just took 100 images, I don't think people could go through and say, yep, that's that lens and that's that lens. I think they're both very, very sharp, and I think anybody would be very, very happy with the results that you're getting from these. All right, let's take a look at this last, this chickadee. And you are going to see this one looked a little softer. Now, the tough thing about it is the chickadee is the toughest subject to get the feather detail on because it's got a black head and then the white. So I, you don't have as much texture. I just couldn't find, I couldn't find a good sparrow when I was, when I had this one out. And really, I wanted to, to mostly test the two new lenses, the 100 to 400 and the 4.5. So I didn't take this one out quite as much. But you can see it's functional. I was, able to, I was able to capture an image with this teleconverter on a 70 to 200. So pretty interesting, um, quick comparison. But I, again, I just think that they're, they're really, really impressive. All right, let's get into the next test. So I told you one of the most important factors for me is the ability of the lens to gather light. So the aperture, the, the larger the aperture, the better. The larger the minimum aperture, for me, the better. Um, and this is a 2.8. So this is the... the the biggest aperture that you can get on a long lens. They, there's one company that makes a 500 2.8. It's about 100 pounds. Like it's a, it's just a, a monstrous lens. But practically speaking, this is about the best light gathering lens you can have for wildlife. And that's why I, I like this one a lot. In terms of the differences, one of the major differences. So you'll see these. I told you, sharpness not a big deal. So why is this lens over 10,000, and why are these 3,000 ish? Well, it really is the ability to gather light. So these have much larger elements inside and the maximum aperture is much different. You're gonna lose one and a third stops of light with this. So what that means is at the same settings, if I was shooting base ISO 100 on this lens, I would be shooting uh, 250 on this lens. And this is a 5.6 aperture, I would be shooting a 100, 200, 400 ISO on this lens. If we bump those up, if I'm shooting 400 on this, I am losing two stops of light when I go to the 5.6. So 400 here, 800, 1600 here. All right, so each stop doubles the previous. So 400, this would be about 900, and then this one would be 1600. So pretty, pretty significant difference in those low light situations. Now, if there's plenty of available light, if you don't shoot low light, if you're shooting action, you're probably shooting in a lot more available light. And then that, that minimum aperture, probably not as big a deal. So for me, a low light shooter, minimum aperture, huge deal. $10,000 more, <laughs> but a huge deal. And that really is the difference in these lenses. I told you, the sharpness comparison, not much of a difference. I mean, not $10,000 worth of difference. So really what you're paying for in this is that the ability to gather light. These you're going to lose um, kind of an average f4.5 is, is, is not bad. Um, 5.6 is kind of standard on, on a lot of telephoto lenses, a lot of uh, zoom lenses. You're getting that 5.6 aperture. And then over here with this teleconverter, you're also at 5.6. Interestingly, this turns into a 140 to 400 5.6. This is a 100 to 400 5.6. Um, I do think, by the way, though, that this one is sharper at that 400 millimeter range. All right, so that's, that's the light gathering ability. You are basically, that's what you're paying for here. You're, you're paying for this just really wide open aperture that gathers a lot of light. Now, I want to talk about speed. I anticipated when I did this, and when I say speed, I'm talking about focusing speed. I anticipated when I did this that this would blow them away. I just thought, this thing focuses really fast. These aren't going to be close. I was going to do a test where I hooked up my recorder to the camera and I wanted to show you the difference in speeds. I didn't have to because these were incredibly fast. I, I was <laughs> really surprised. And then I thought, well, the 100 to 400 certainly won't be as fast as the Prime when it comes to focusing. It was just as fast. Practically speaking, now we may go out and test it and measure it and somebody may say, well, this is like 5% faster, this one's 10% slower, whatever. But practically speaking, I didn't see a difference in focusing speeds on any of these. So when I had good available light, these things were just really, really fast. 
much different, by the way, than some of the other telephotos that I've used. I can remember um, I had some clients at a workshop and I would switch lenses with them. I'd say, hey, you know what, give, give my, my lens a try. And I would put theirs on and I was, I was really like, wow, this is the 200 to 500. It was, it was slow by comparison. You could feel it. Um, I expected that with these and I did not get it. So focusing speed, if we were talking about like focusing speed and I was grading these out, it's like A, 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 and the 7200 focuses really, really fast. They're actually all very impressive. So if I was grading these out, probably all getting A's on this one. All right, let's look at one more criteria. A minimum focus. I want to I want to spend some time on this. And and I told you in the specs, this is eight foot minimum focus. This is eight foot minimum focus. And these are three feet minimum focus. Why does that make a difference? Like, Scott, I don't shoot. I'm a, I'm a wildlife photographer, right? I'm not three feet away from the birds very often. I don't need three foot minimum focus. Eight feet is a good working distance for birds. So if this is eight feet, I'm happy. By the way, the 500s and the 600 millimeters, the long uh, primes, their minimum focus is generally t around 10 feet for 500 millimeters and around 13 feet for 600 millimeters. All right, so much different. Uh, another reason I really like the, uh, the 400 millimeter. Uh, again, I thought this would have a, a shorter minimum focusing distance. It does not. So at eight feet versus three feet, why does that matter? Well, here's one of the, the big differences. And at the end, I'm going to tell you who these are for. This lens becomes much more versatile. Yeah, maybe three feet isn't practical for birds, but is it practical for flowers? Is it practical for insects? And could I add teleconverters to this? Well, I'm going to show you at the end. Yes, you can. And yes, it makes a pretty impressive macro-like setup. Again, I did a video on this about adapting your lens for, for macro photography, adapting your wildlife lenses for uh, macro photography. So really interesting that it, it focuses at less than half the distance at the same 400 millimeter length. So um, if I was grading this in terms of minimum focus, this one's actually pretty good for what it is. Let's say I grade this a B, I grade this a B. Well, I've got to grade these like A's because they focus down really, really close at 400 millimeters. So really something to think about here. If we look at weight, I told you, again, if I'm grading these out, I'm going to grade mine at a B only because of its size and aperture. For what it is, down at six pounds, really, really nice. These at half of that, half that weight, even almost a third of that weight, are just impressive. I would grade these out as, as A's, all three of these as A's. I, I am really, really just impressed with the weight on those. If weight is a major determinant for you, if it's a major factor, these, you really have to consider these. Very, very impressive. And the last thing I want to talk about is versatility. Um, I, I would say, in terms of versatility, what I'm talking about is what can you do with it? So these are, these are fixed primes. They're not very versatile. Maybe you could add a 2x converter on there, or maybe you could put some, uh, I, I would not use extension tubes to get closer to subjects. Maybe with this lighter lens, you could use some extension tubes, but certainly not with the heavier lenses. I don't recommend that. So they're not really versatile. So if grading these out in terms of versatility, they're like a C. These two are very interesting because these two have that three foot minimum focus distance. I can get them to 400 millimeters. And in this one, I can actually put a 2x converter onto this. I can focus at three feet. I can be shooting at 800 millimeters, three feet away. It's light enough. I can add extension tubes to it. And in fact, I did that. And what I found is that I could take this lens, this 100 to 400, I could take this and I could almost, not quite, could almost get it to a macro lens. Let me show you real quick. I'm going to switch over to that other view. And I want to show you what happened when I took a the tennis ball. And I compared the, my, my true macro setup, my one-to-one -one macro here versus this 100 to 400 with a 2x converter. Now, it's not quite there. I mean, it's not quite macro one-to-one, -one, but pretty impressive. Now, watch what happened here. I took this little memory card that's about an inch long, and I added extension tubes to the 100 to 400. And that let me get even closer than three feet. So I was about two feet away at 800 millimeters, two feet away. And then when I did the, compared that to the macro, 
Here's the one-to-one -one macro lens. And here, I got pretty close. So not as sharp, by the way, as the macro. The macro was sharper at that distance because I'm very, very close with that macro lens and it's designed for. But if I was taking flowers, birds, butterflies, this is absolutely sharp enough to handle macro type work. You're not going to get those stacked, detailed, um, hyper detailed bugs in the eyes and all those little crevices. You're not going to be able to do that with this lens in this setup. But for flowers and butterflies, larger insects, caterpillars, I think you could absolutely get away with this setup using the 2x converter. Now you you may you're gonna when you put that 2x converter on here, you're gonna be down at f11, which isn't necessarily bad for macro work. A lot of macro photographers are already stopping down to f11 or f16, so doesn't really hurt you there. But you'll need a lot of available light, or you're probably gonna use a flash with this. You could absolutely set up a system where you would use this. And imagine this: you've got your bird lens. You've got your mammal lens at 100 millimeters. You can zoom out. It's the only thing, uh, or compared to these two, it's the only one that's going to allow you to do that. Now, the 70 to 200 would allow you to do that also. But this is at 400 millimeters for birds or whatever. This is going to be one of the sharpest lenses here. It's going to also be able to zoom in and out. It's got a focusing distance, a minimum focusing distance. It's less than half of the other two. That makes this one a pretty powerful contender for my favorite of this series. Now, before you go, I'm going to give you recommendations because while I, I'm, I told you this one's got versatility just out of control. This is an A. These are C's. Maybe this is a B. This one's an A. It, it really, really was impressive. That minimum focusing distance just kind of, kind of blew me away. So let's talk about who these are for. Well. Make this one pretty easy. If you have an unlimited budget, if money's not a concern and you don't mind the extra weight, this is a pretty obvious choice. It's, it's, it's the sharpest and it gives you two full stops of light over this 5.6. One and a third stop light over this 4.5. So this is for the person that's not really concerned about budget. But let's get into these middle two because I think this is what's going to be the most interesting. At the end, I'm also just going to mention who I think this one, this setup is for. All right, the 4.5, who is this for? This is for somebody that wants really sharp lens, that focuses really fast, and is a good compromise on light. It's, 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 at 4.5 is a pretty good aperture for most wildlife photographers. It, it's not the 2.8, but it's, it's not bad. It's also a prime lens, and so it doesn't have that zoom feature, so the build quality on this is probably a little more, in my mind, it's a little more solid. Um, and it won't allow dust and debris to get inside the lens. So this one to me is just a really good compromise if you're always at 400 millimeters. If you don't need the zoom, if you know you're going to be at 400 millimeters all the time, this will also take the teleconverter a little bit better. So you could add a 1.4 to this and you'd be at f6.3 at 560 millimeters on a very fast focusing lens. It's super sharp. So this is who that one's for. This is for the person that wants that compromise of light. All right, I'm gonna slide this one over. Who's this one for? This is for the person that wants versatility. This is your do everything lens. This, you take it out on a safari, you take it into your backyard and you do macro photography and you take it to the lake and you shoot ducks. The downside of this, really the only cons of this is it's 5.6, so it's not gonna be as good in terms of working with available light as these other two. The other thing is just inherent in all zoom lenses. I shouldn't say all, most zoom lenses. Um, it is possible that in extreme conditions, if you're in sand and dirt and muck and grime, I, I don't like these telezoom lenses. So this uh, for me is not my favorite thing, but it is really, really versatile. So if you're not in those really bad conditions out in the rain, out in the mud, out in the sand, um, then this would be really an excellent choice. If you are in those conditions, personally, my, my, my preference is to stay with these really well-built prime lenses. And then the last one I just want to talk about real quickly is, is there an option of this for a wildlife photographer? Here's the thing. If I was an indoor event photographer, the 70 to 200 at f2.8 is a wonderful lens. It's a great event, 
event lens, weddings, uh, sporting events inside, concerts inside. So if you do that a lot, if that's kind of your primary thing, maybe you just get the teleconverter and if birds is a, is a pastime or a hobby or wildlife is kind of just a hobby and a pastime and you're not going to be blowing up images, you know, huge and hang them on walls, then this would be a great option because for the cost of the teleconverter, you're getting a very similar, not as sharp, but a similar effect of what these other lenses have. So I would say this is a usable setup, um, not the sharpest, but definitely usable for somebody that is doing the other things instead. If I was an indoor photographer, this 100 to 400 would not be my choice because of the amount of available light. Indoors, we just want as you know these wide open apertures um, to get as much light as we can. So let's wrap this one up. I hope you liked the comparisons that I did in this one. I, I hope you found it helpful. And maybe if you were kind of torn in here, you're like, you know what? That makes sense. You know, the 4.5 makes sense to me for the, the type of shooter I am, or the 100 to 400 makes sense for what I need. Um, and I hope you found some value in that. I took a lot of pride in doing this. It took me a long time to test it. I was very, very and again, thank you to B&H because I love getting my hands on this product that I would never be able to get my hands on and really work with it um, without their, their partnership a wonderful company to work with. So thank you B&H for this one. Um, let me know down in the comments, what do, you, like, what do you think? Did you like the review? I haven't seen anything like this on YouTube where they got four different 400 millimeter lenses and compared them side by side. So uh, I, hope you, I hope you liked it. Down in the comments, if there's anything you'd like me to improve on or if there's any other suggestions you have in the future for tests or videos, hey, you let me know. Maybe I can get to that as well. So thanks for your support on the channel. I really do appreciate it. And as always, I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.